Hello. So we're going to have a look at legislation and regulation. Uh, so these two terms uh, ca can be used interchangeably, but there is a difference uh, bet between them. So uh, if we just have a look here on the left hand side, it talks about regulations are rules that are enforced by an authority and they're usually backed up by legislation. So what, we, what we're seeing here is that regulation are kind of rules that are enforced uh, and there's some legal backing behind these rules. Uh, and what that means is that obviously if these rules are broken, laws that have been set out will mean that legal action will be taken against those who break the rules. Uh, so regulation is the idea that there are rules that uh, need to be maintained. And if those rules are broken, then legislation will clearly state that there is a consequence to those uh, rules being broken. Uh, so if we were just to separate them out, as we have done in, at the bottom left, uh, legislation is a law or set of laws made by a government and uh, regulation is a rule or directive made and maintained by an authority. Uh, so, for example, I try to give some here some examples. So Ofgem is the regulatory body. So the um, government um, body who looks after um well, Ofgem looks after uh, the gas and electric market, so make sure the companies there are not exploiting consumers. Uh, and Ofwat uh, are responsible for looking after the water and sewage uh, industry within the United Kingdom. Uh, again, those bodies are there to help try and protect consumers and make sure the firms within those industries aren't breaking any uh, rules. Uh, and obviously, if they do break the rules, then legislation would be enforced and they would face uh, particular fines. And then I tried to find an example here of specific leg legislation. And a specific piece of legislation is uh, the smoking ban, the idea that they're, you're not allowed to smoke within inside a uh, public place. Obviously, that is a law. And if you break that law, you will be punished. OK, so what market failures do, do legislation and regulation actually uh come to address well they can address uh, demerit goods so when we th obviously think about demerit goods we're thinking about uh, negative externalities in consumption so they can they can help with that obviously um, thinking about the smoking ban obviously that uh, ban on smoking within public places uh, prevents secondhand smoking and uh, therefore obviously other people do not suffer the negative impacts of one person smoking uh, also it can be used for negative externalities in production so it could be a particular limit on the amount of pollution uh, so a regulatory body uh, could in main make sure that firms aren't polluting over a certain amount it can be used for monopolies to making sure monopolies do not exploit consumers uh, in the sense that preventing uh, firms from charging a too high a price that would exploit consumers and also it helps to correct the market failure of information uh, failure uh, it could be uh, regulation uh, that firms must uh, provide consumers with all the necessary information uh, so they can make an informed judgment uh, and by doing so that should hopefully uh, correct the market failure because consumers will have all the necessary information uh, so that's kind of a brief overview of what we're going to be looking at with regards to legislation and regulation uh, and now we're going to particularly particularly look at a particular type of regulation and that particular type of uh, regulation is going to be a legal limit okay uh, and i briefly alluded to a legal limit when we talked about a particular type of regulation that could be used uh, to correct the market failure with uh, negative externalities in production. Uh, so let's just get some uh, notes with regards to this legal limit. So a legal limit could particularly be used to address the market failure of negative externalities in production. And how could it solve that market failure? Well, we could have a legal limit on pollution. So if we said that firms can only uh, pollute a certain amount, uh, then that would be a form of 
uh, though that would hope that would be a bit of uh, legislation that is regulated by a particular body so a particular body uh, environmental agency, for example, would uh, monitor the amount of pollution that firms uh, produce. And if firms uh, disobeyed that rule or directive, then legislation would kick in to punish the offending firm. So this is a market failure. A legal limit would address negative externalities in production and in particular a legal limit on the amount of pollution. So what we're going to do is draw a relevant diagram now and we're going to explain how a legal limit would work to solve the market failure. So, price, cost, benefit. And then we have quantity. And we're obviously here going to be drawing a negative externalities in production diagram. We've got a downward sloping curve. D equals MPB equals MSB. We've got our MPC equals supply. And we have our marginal social cost curve there. We're going to add in our equilibrium point. And that'll be P, that'll be P1, that'll be Q, and that'll be Q1. So we've drawn our negative externalities in production diagram. If we wanted to go one step further, Obviously, we could have included our welfare, uh, our welfare loss, but we're not going to do that here because well, what we're focusing on here is we're focusing on the particular piece of uh, regulation, which is a legal limit. So what I'm going to introduce now is I'm going to draw a vertical line that goes through the social optimum. And all I'm going to label that vertical line is I'm going to label that vertical line legal limit okay and the key thing here is that that legal limit vertical line goes through the social optimum and we have a quantity of q1 which is the social optimum quantity so let's explain how this legal limit works uh, and what on earth is going on in our diagram so there is a legal limit imposed Legal limit imposed at the social optimum. So this legal limit is imposed at the social optimum. What this means is limit the amount of pollution firms can produce. So, they've, firms have now been limited on the amount of pollution that they can uh, produce. So, what are firms going to have to do? Well, at, so if we consider at the where they were before and where they need to get to, this will explain how the legal limit works. So, we're probably actually going to uh, refer back to some more points. So, if we just label the free market equilibrium A. So, at point A which we just explained was the free market equilibrium. And the reason why point A is the free market equilibrium is because it's where MPC is equal to MPB, or alternatively, we could say where demand is equal to supply. At point A, there is a welfare loss to society and that welfare loss would have been if we label that point b and that point c and we can add into our diagram here oh i'm label that point c there's welfare loss to society of a b c due to pollution uh, at point A there is a welfare loss society of ABC due to pollution um, 
as external costs to third parties are not considered. So that, that, that explains why we're operating at point A. Uh, the idea that there's a welfare loss to society of ABC due to pollution as external cost to third parties uh, are not considered. Uh, and what we see is a too high uh, quantity. And at Q and a too low a price. P. Okay, so we've talked about the the issue there of operating the free market equilibrium. So the legal limits obviously imposed, uh, and obviously therefore uh, pollution can't exceed that. So obviously, if they operated at uh, the free market equilibrium, that there's too much pollution, and they would therefore be fined. They would be. Uh, breaking the rules and therefore legislation would kick in and they would be fined for the activities that they uh, were doing. Uh, so, in order to meet legal limit, firms must reduce output to reduce pollution and therefore meet the legal limit. Okay, so what we're basically saying is that firms have to meet this legal limit, so they're going to have to reduce the amount that they produce, uh, because if they reduce the amount that they produce, obviously the pollution that they, uh, they produce is therefore going to fall, uh, and therefore that would allow them to meet the uh, legal limit. So as a result, we see a uh, contraction along... D equals MPB equals MSB curve from point A to point B. We see a reduction in quantity from Q to Q1. And we see an increase in price from P to P1 and the uh, social optimum is achieved welfare would be maximised and also we would achieve allocative efficiency obviously we are assuming here that the legal limit is set at the social optimum so this is an assumption that we've made that the legal limit has been correctly applied at the social optimum okay uh, and obviously if we just wanted to make sure we linked it back to the market failure so if we just went over here uh, what we would clearly say is the uh, increase price P to P1 and decrease quantity Q to Q1 would help solve market failure of overproduction.
and there we go that is how a legal limit works so just to recap a legal limit would be imposed and hopefully it would be imposed um, oh gosh i've just realized there's a there's a spelling mistake there it'd be imposed That's my apologies there. There should be imposed there. So a legal limit imposed at the social optimum. And what this limits, uh, legal limit does, it limits the amount of pollution that firms can produce. So originally firms would have been producing at point A, the free market equilibrium, uh, MPC equals MPB or demand equals supply. Therefore, there is a welfare loss to society of the area ABC due to pollution as external, external costs to third parties are not considered. So there's a too high a quantity uh, being produced at a too low a price of P. In order to meet the legal limit, firms must reduce their output to reduce pollution and therefore meet the legal limit. So as a result, uh, firms obviously reducing their output, we see a contraction along the demand curve uh, from MPB to MSB uh, curve as firms reduce their output. And we see a reduction in the quantity from Q to Q1, an increase in the price from P to P1. The social optimum would be achieved uh, at welfare being maximised and allocative efficiency being maximised. And therefore, uh, we have solved the market failure. So that is how a legal limit uh, would be used uh, to uh, correct the market failure because... Um, Firms have to reduce their output to ensure that they don't pollute too much.